When Shane Bear was paralyzed from the waist down, the gym was the outlet he needed. And I just fell in love with it because I'm like, it makes me feel normal. Like I can do things that not a lot of people can do. His life was changed after a car crash. I was driving to work and a deer jumped in front of me and I swerved, hit an embankment, went off the other side, woke up in a helicopter. He's battled back, but years later he was given another diagnosis, this one for CIDP, a rare autoimmune disorder that shuts down nerve endings, causes muscle weakness, and can eventually lead to paralysis. I wouldn't be able to do anything. I wouldn't even be able to roll around in a wheelchair. That's terrifying. And that's horrible. Bear started treating CIDP with a drug called Hyzentra. And it was almost complete reversal. Bear has Medicare, which covered Hyzentra when a nurse was administering it to him in the comfort of his own home. But the insurance rules meant it was not covered when the nurse left, and he could start administering the drug himself at home. But I was like, no, I'm going to fight. After five appeals, a judge finally ruled in his favor. Bear was paying almost nothing for the drug. But just a few months later, he received a letter saying that Hyzentra coverage would switch from Medicare Part D to Part B. The way the Medicare system is set up um, around Hyzentra is going to make it difficult for him to, to access Hyzentra in, in, in the home, honestly. Logan Davis is the past board chair of the National Home Infusion Association. The NHIA wrote a letter to Medicare saying that for people like Bear who don't have supplemental insurance with Medicare, the switch from Part D to Part B for Hyzentra could be a significant hardship. The Bear says his new out-of-pocket costs would be about $10,000 a month. I mean, it might as well be $10,000 a day because I don't know anybody that can afford that. Hyzentra is manufactured by CSL Bearing, and in a press release, the company praised the switch to Part B claiming it would increase access and decrease out-of-pocket costs for patients, even as the price spiked for patients yeah, like Bayer. In the same press release, a leading foundation for patients with Bayer's disease also supported the change. But public records obtained by WBTV show the company that makes the drug, CSL Bearing, is a major contributor, giving more than $400,000 last year alone. You know, it makes you question, too, you know, why... You know, why is there such a motivation by a certain group of stakeholders around, you know, things living in Part B? WBTV reached out to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CSL Bearing, and the GBS CIDP Foundation to ask why the switch to Part B happened and for data to back up their claims. CSL wrote that patients with Part B and Medigap will see a reduction in out-of-pocket costs. The foundation wrote they support the switch to Part B because it allows most people to access a supplemental plan that covers the 20% copay. But for people like Bayer, the switch to Part B makes it far more expensive than it is for anyone on Part D. For him, it's impossible to afford, and he says he can feel the symptoms of the CIDP coming back. I was prepared for that, but I'm like, man, I don't, I don't like it. It's scary. It's just frustrating.